Good to see all of you this morning. I hope you had a great week. You know, we just came to know that the U.S. has the new president, Mr. Joe Biden. Biden. Amen. So we have been studying out the book of Genesis. And last Sunday we had studied out Genesis chapter 28 where we saw God friended Jacob. And we saw the qualities of God, that God is an initiator, a provider, a promise keeper, and a protector. Last week was very, it was a great experience for many of us where we could meet after seven months at Seva Kendra face to face and fellowship and worship God together. I do apologize for the YouTube video did not work properly. We had a network problem there. So let's turn to Genesis chapter 29. Let's look at what we can learn today. Now if you remember, Jacob left his family. He was on his way. He had an interaction with God. And now he's continuing his journey. So from verse 1 to 14, he arrives at the place looking for his uncle and his fa uncle's family. So Laban, his uncle, that is his mother, Rebecca's brother, you know, he meets the family over there. And he tells him everything that has happened. So let's go to Genesis chapter 29, verse 14 onwards. And I'll read it in English. It says, after Jacob had stayed with him for a whole month. That means Jacob was not planning to leave very soon. And yet during that time, he was helping his uncle in whatever ways he could. So Laban said, just because you are my relative, you know, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what your wages should be. So Laban is asking him, okay, you work for me, I'll pay you. What do you want? Now in verse 16 it says, Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah and the name of younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel had a lovely figure and was beautiful. So Laban had two daughters, Leah and Rachel. And for some reason, Jacob fell in love with Rachel. What was the reason? Very simple. She was good looking and she had a lovely figure. But Leah had weak eyes and so there are many different scholars who have different interpretation of what a weak eye could be. For some they say maybe she had an eye problem. But most of the scholars feel like weak eyes basically means she was not that attractive compared to Rachel. So in verse 18, Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I'll work for you seven years in return for your younger daughter Rachel. Seven years is a long time by the way. And seven years of wages is a big dowry to pay to the girl's family. Now in Bible times, the groom always gave gifts to the girl and her family when getting married. We see that in Genesis 24, uh, when Abraham sends his servant to Rebekah, he sends him with a lot of gifts. And he gives gold and silver and jewelry to Rebekah as well as to her brothers. So... Since Jacob left home with nothing, he had nothing to offer to the bride and to the family. And so he says, seven years of wages will be what I can offer you. And Laban gladly agrees. A few things we notice over here when La Jacob makes this uh, deal with Laban. The first thing is Jacob is willing to pay a very high price for marrying Rachel. You know, when you, when you are in love with someone, you're willing to make sacrifices. And Jacob did that. The same we see in John 3.16. You know, because God so loved the world that he was willing to make sacrifice for us by giving Jesus. The second thing we notice about Jacob was he was willing to pay seven years of wages because he thought it was worth it. Rachel was worth seven years of my wages. Can you imagine Rachel, how she must have felt knowing that someone was willing to pay so much for her? She must have, how valuable she must have felt, how much loved she must have felt by Jacob. What must have happened to her self-worth when she heard that Jacob was willing to pay seven years of wages? Now many of us, we struggle with low self-worth, including myself. No one has paid such a huge price for us. We have so low self-worth because maybe we do not come from a very influential family. 
or we do not go to a very renowned school or a college or we do not you know work for a very renowned company or do not have a good salary package compared to others maybe you do not have a car like everybody else or you don't own a house or even if you do own a house maybe it is not in the most prominent location we get our we get our self worth from all these things and when we don't have these yeah. our self worth becomes very low yeah. i just want to let you know that all these are, gives us false self worth But there is someone who considers you and me so valuable that he was willing to pay for your redemption his very own life and blood Jesus Christ. If you look back to the same scripture that was shown just now in John 3:16, you know we you know for God so loved the world, you know replace the word world with your name and read it instead of the word world put your name. You know for God so loved Dominic that he gave his one and only son for god so loved the uh, love shanti that he gave his one and only son when you put your name it is so personal that he did die for you and if someone is willing to die for you you are valuable the third thing we see about jacob over here was he was willing to wait for 7 years before marrying rachel he was very patient a very rare quality in today's world something we can learn from jacob especially those of you who are single or the, even those who are teens the youth you know there's a time for everything we got to learn to be patient not try to get into a relationship at a very early age in today's world if you do not have a boyfriend or a girlfriend then there is something wrong with you but i just want to let you know that that is a lie from satan you can have friends there's nothing wrong in that But look in song of song chapter 8 was 4 you know there's a good scripture that says that daughters of Jerusalem I charge you do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires yeah. so the song of songs tells us that be patient at the right time you know you can move ahead in a relationship till then don't arouse or awaken love unnecessary and the fourth thing that we see over here is those 7 years felt just like few days to Jacob because of his love for Rachel you know when you love doing something you know time passes by and you don't even realize it 7 years few days not few weeks of human few days sometimes sometimes my family tells the same thing about me you know when i preach they say your message today was too long <laughs> and i tell them by the way i only preach 45 minutes with translation Or sometimes they say oh your message was too short and I say no it was 45 minutes with translation so I know that if someone says it was too long then I know I didn't do a good job but when in love everything looks good so 7 years is completed and in verse 21 let's go to Genesis 21 then Jacob said to Laban give me my wife my time is completed and I want to make love to her now this is not how you propose to the father of the bride <laughs> basically telling 7 years is up i want to sleep with your daughter if someone comes and tells me that way that person going to get a nice whack but then in verse 22 onward it says so laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast but when evening came he took his daughter lea and brought to her to jacob and jacob made love to her and laban gave his servant zilpha to his daughter as a attendant when morning came there was lea So Jacob said to Laban, "What is this you have done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me?" Looks like lying and cheating was running in the family. We see the cheating and lying, Rebecca, then Jacob, Laban, and I believe even Leah is involved. Yeah. Because how could she get married without informing her sister Rachel and informing her new bridegroom? Now you might be wondering how come he slept with her without knowing who it was. Yeah. Remember in those days there was no electric city. There, no there was no electric city in those days and also the bride would wear veils. It's only when the morning came he realized that it was Leah and not Rachel. We see over here that Jacob gets deceived and cheated by his own uncle. He worked for Rachel, he got Leah. What goes around comes around. Because that's what Jacob did exactly the same thing. He cheated his father. he cheated his brother and now someone else is cheating him there is always a bigger fish than you and as a good lesson you know if we cheat others or we take advantage of others 
or we are not kind to others, then don't be surprised when the same thing happens to us. And so he's asking, why have you deceived me? Now Laban had a good reason. In verse 26, Laban replied, it is not a custom here to give the, your younger daughter in marriage before the older one. In a very similar custom we have in India. Now the big question we got to ask ourselves is, how come he kept this information from Jacob for seven years? How come he never even once mentioned the cultural rule before the wedding? That just shows that Laban was a shrewd guy. He was very intentional and deliberate in what he was thinking about. He, he was thinking about it the, the whole seven years, yeah. what he was going to do. In verse 27 to 30. Now Laban was a very shrewd guy. He said, no problem, Jacob. Work seven more, seven more years for me and match, marry Rachel. So two things happened. He got, both his daughters got married in one go. Plus he got a free servant to work for him for 14 years you know i'm sure by this time jacob is very embarrassed that he's married the wrong person and you can't change it has it ever happened to you you're walking with your wife and suddenly you catch someone else <laughs> else's hands instead of your wife <laughs> it happened to me joyce and we had gone for a 25th oh anniversary <laughs> in europe and as we were walking suddenly i don't know joyce was behind and i just caught someone's hand <laughs> And it was a black woman. <laughs> Suddenly I was looking at the hand. How come the white hand became black hand? It was someone else's hand. Luckily that woman was understanding what happened. She knew what was happening, but she was laughing. And I'm sure Joyce was laughing from behind. <laughs> but that was fun. But it was not fun for Jacob over here because he's, he's stuck with her for the rest of his life. Let's read further. It says, when the Lord said that Leah, when the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive, but Rachel remained childless. Now let's stop you for a moment. Even though Leah was married to Jacob, Leah felt rejection from day one. It was very clear to her that, you know what, Jacob loved her younger sister more. And like Leah, we also have been through or lived through the rejection in our lives. Maybe you, you were in a relationship and that person just dumped you and walked away for someone else. Or you're married, but you don't feel loved by your spouse. Or maybe you grew up in a house where your parents were not available for you. They were an absentee parents. And even though no one knows that you feel rejected and lonely, God sees our loneliness. He sees when you are not invited or you are excluded. And God is always in the business of selecting those that others rejected. So Jacob chose Rachel, God chose Leah. And God enabled her to do something that her sister could not do. You know, she was able to bear four sons to Jacob. While Leah, Rachel could not have any children. But let's read in verse 32, it says, Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. misery. Surely my husband will love me now. She conceived again and when she gave birth to her son, she said, because the Lord heard that I'm not loved, he gave me this one too. So she named him Simon, Simeon. Again she conceived and when she gave birth to her son, she said, now at last my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. So she, he named, he was named Levi. She conceived again and when she gave birth to her son, she said, this time, I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then she stopped having children. Now children are a gift from God. But there was something wrong about having children in terms of Leah. Why did Leah want to have children? Because Leah was trying to get her husband to love her, to pay attention to her. She thought that if I have one more son, my, my son, husband will love me. If I have one more son, my husband will, you know, leave Rachel and start giving attention to me. There's always that one, that one more thing will make us happy. Ask yourself, what, is that, what are you running after? What is that one thing that you think is going to make you happy? And you're running after it. You know, our joy should not be based on how many relationships we have, how many children we have, how much money we have, what car we drive, where we stay. Our joy needs to come from knowing that we belong to Jesus. Yeah. The last son that Leah had was Judah. And it was through Judah's line 
that Jesus, our Savior, was born. So even though Jacob, in a way, rejected Leah, God used Leah and through her, our salvation, we came through. So what man rejected, God used that for something so beautiful that it had an eternal impact that you and I use that has that advantage of that, has that blessing, has that, that salvation through Leah. So don't allow the world's rejection to take away your joy. Let us keep doing what is right and God will use us for his glory the way he used Leah. So in conclusion, what did we learn today? What, what do we get out from this? Number one is what goes around comes around. So be careful how you treat others. What you do to others, it will come to you. But the consequences might be much more than what you thought. Jacob deceived his father and his brother. He got deceived by his own family member, his uncle. The second thing we learned is, you know, what? you and I, we are valuable to God. You know, your self-worth does not come from the world, but from what Jesus did for us on the cross. So walk confidently, knowing that you belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Third thing we see over here is, hey, you're not alone. You know, you might feel rejected, but you are not alone. God is with you the way God was with Leah, even though she was rejected by Jacob. Amen. I hope we learned something today. What is that one thing that you want to take with you, that you want to work, that you need to change? And for me, the thing that I want to take back is, I just need to do what is right, and God will use me in a big way or in a small way, or in a small way that might lead to something big. I mean, thank you very much. God bless you. Have a great week, and I pray that all of you stay healthy.